and welcome back to computer vision lecture series this is lecture 11 part 1 there will be another part to this lecture but uh, this is the final lecture for our course for this summer semester so let's just jump back in and start from where I left until now what we have discussed in the last lecture specifically we discussed about a structured light which was uh, using the same geometrical construction as um, optical flow finding dense motion estimation and uh, we used the same uh, ideas same geometry and applied it uh, uh, using structured light um, algorithm where we can use uh, or where we can estimate depth or the uh, shapes of the objects uh, under consideration even when the surfaces of objects are quite uniform so that was the main advantage of using a uh, structured light approach uh, in one of those instances we discussed also about portable laser scanner so in this scanner what does this scanner uh, generates is like a point cloud it generates in 3d uh, space uh, different points that are um, uh, they lo it localizes uh, specific points in 3d plane where uh, the uh, which represents the distances of the uh, points on the surface of the objects being scanned so in this case uh, when after scanning the face of this person when the 3d point was generated the 3d point cloud so this is a collection of all these 3d points in real life and therefore it is a, a point cloud we can con consider it as a point cloud or a 3d um, or a 3d um, uh, depth map or 3d shape uh, of this person here you can see that uh, there are a lot of missed uh, points and these points which are also estimated with, with high accuracy however are not smooth okay so there are uh, they are not smooth in the sense that we, we can't have a very high resolution we can have a high very high accuracy for the localization but not high resolution because there are is a limit of uh, limit to the number of points that we can use as we saw in the case of using connect so i want to build up on the same idea and move forward and talk about surface reconstruction in this uh, another task or another topic of computer vision here what we do is using these different 3d scans or 3d point clouds of the same object from different angles views and stuff like that from angles views and um, positions and um, exposures and all those uh, different parameters we generate a holistic more dense very accurate uh, surface reconstruction so it's not always possible to re uh, get these 3d point clouds with one imaging method so instead of that what we do is we generate multiple uh, such scans and then we merge those scans so given these dense set of 3D points from multiple scans or stream of depth images or reconstructed from multi-view stereo, our main goal or challenge or the final um, product or result of surface reconstruction is to reconstruct a closed surface of the object. What do we mean? So the we have uh, sub scans or uh, multiple scans like this the green and the red ones and then we merge it to form a more continuous more solid more rigid um, surface of this uh, of this object in this case it is a rabbit surface reconstruction has multiple problems in it the first problem to um, address is that there there needs to be multiple scans and they need to be aligned so in order to generate a more uh, holistic more uh, rigid surface from multiple scans we need to align them so that's the first problem to address the second problem to address is that after merging all those points in proper alignment uh, how do we convert this dense point cloud to a surface here on the right hand side for the purpose of this recording uh, or this part of this lecture we are going to focus only on the first problem the first problem can be divided again uh, it's alignment or registration it's the same thing and the first problem can be uh, divided into two steps one is the course alignment second is the final alignment what do we mean by course alignments so in course alignment uh, we already know some camera paths we already have these multiple scans with us and a rough alignment can be determined from feature matching so either the user gave gives the input for the points to be matched 
or a rough estimate is made from uh, feature correspondences by clicking on three different corresponding points or finding some rigid transformation that matches this and uh, and then align those uh, these two uh, scans so the general problem is the given two sets of corresponding points p i and q i in two different scans uh, we need to find a rotation and translation that is rigid body transformation such that uh, this error is minimized and this error can be minimized using procrustes problem solving uh, algorithm and uh, it's nothing but the, so the solution is nothing but uh, an svd decomposition where you can uh, resolve this uh, or minimize this uh, metric this is how uh, course alignment is done so after course alignment what happens is uh, so in course alignment either you choose certain points for example these red points mentioned on this uh, golden uh, um, golden scan and on this white or the silver scan the same points are located in different parts of the object and uh, we try to re uh, uh, register them or align them using this uh, reference points uh, the problem with course alignment is that sometimes these points are not present in all the scans also it is possible that uh, uh, that while choosing these points we as a uh, user uh, have missed or not used exactly the same point and therefore the alignment do not match very well um, in case of automatically detected features like uh, when you find correspondences feature correspondences uh, maybe you use a feature extractor in those cases it's not possible to find matching features because um, both of these scans are incomplete and maybe those features are not present in these scans and also we have to remember that these scans are 3d point clouds in general so to find feature correspondences will be a bit more tougher so what is the step and the next step so the so the reason we are discussing is the, this is because uh, to highlight that course alignment does not solve our problem uh, we need multiple steps the second step uh, called final uh, registration or final alignment so as you can see from this uh, middle figure to the right figure when we go uh, these points that the users had picked are now uh, a bit apart however this surface that is reconstructed is much more merged much more dense and much more resolved and uh, we want such a sol solution so here we see that the points chosen by users are uh, a bit off because they were not chosen uh, to be the right points and uh, so uh, even if we use course alignment iteratively it will not solve this problem so what do we do how do we generate a finer alignment from a partially aligned or a course alignment we need to find the next optimal or the near next uh, optimal alignment of these points so either what we can do is we can find um, uh, corresponding points uh, between these two scans and find the minimum of them uh, or we can find um, or we can use another method called iterative uh, it's an iterative method and we are going to look at them now so in final fine registration if correct correspondence is unknown alignment can be found using orthogonal procrustes analysis so if we know exact correspondences they, then it is easier to solve but most often than not in practice it is not uh, easy um, so what is the problem here how to find correspondences the best best or the simplest way is that the user input that we choose those points that we want to uh, match across these two curves um, so these two are representative curves or the of the scans that we are talking about so instead of talking about point clouds we are just using these two examples of these two curves and we want to match this so if we can match these curves we can use the same method to do to apply for 3d point clouds so uh, our problem right now is to how to find correspondences can be can we use features can we use the user input we saw what uh, happened when we use the user input and feature it's not so easy straightforward so what do we do we have an alternative method we assume closest points correspond what what does this mean is that when you have these two curves after course alignment uh, we assume that the point uh, on the another curve which is closest to the chosen point in the current curve so uh, let me make this more clear uh, let's say we are talking about uh, this point on the red curve and we want to find 
the closest point from for, from this uh, of closest point on blue curve from this point on the red curve and we just assume that the closest point will match or they are the corresponding point and then we generate this kind of uh, a finer a much more finer alignment than uh, on the left uh, this is one method however uh, and we can iterate over it and we can finally uh, generate this um, uh, nice looking very good fine registration and for each iteration it will decrease the sum of square distances between the data data sets and every iteration will bring both of these scans more closer to the target scan and it merges quite well and there is a global alignment um, if there is a if there is a condition of gold global alignment then using that condition you can uh, stop your iterative algorithm this method of finding this match using closest points uh, by assumption of some points that are closest to the, um, to the in both the curves is called iterative closest point algorithm and we are going to look into a, it a bit deeper so let's say you have two scans p and q uh, you find pairs of closest points p i and q i in p and q scans using kd tree to speed up the search we will uh, discuss about this a bit later once you find this closest point pairs and you find a rotation matrix and a translation which minimizes this um, um, this cost function uh, this cost function can be minimized the solution can be found by procrustes method and then when uh, for every point we compute the uh, the final metric we should be able to uh, see that the error is decreasing uh, so how to choose these closest points there are it's a very common problem um, so for every for, so for a given set of points P in uh, the first scan to find the nearest point or the k nearest point in P uh, there are efficient algorithms available like uh, artificial neural network which is like k means clustering algorithm uh, which uses which we, you can use um, um, L2 norm or distance matrix to find the k nearest neighbors from, for these points and then choose those pairs of points uh and yeah and then you iterate so let's say for example the purple scan here represents p and the white uh, scan represents uh, point q so after the first iteration uh, the scans look like this and then when you start um, updating your rotation and translation metric every time your uh, scans move closer every time you update your uh, value of q uh, set of points in q and similarly at the end you will get a much more resolved much more fine and smoother curve and in this case you can see that the both of this these scans have are matching quite well and they are overlapped and have a nice smoother curvature so how to pick point uh, how to pick correspondences and uh, the question is like uh, for all points in p we find the closest point in q um, if we do that if the scan is very big with a lot of uh, huge number of point clouds then this method is very expensive in practice what we do is for a subset of points in P we find the closest point in Q so there is a group of points uh, in uh, P scan which we consider and then we find which of the points in Q matches closest to Q and then we fix the this uh, correspondence uh, we can go so there are multiple techniques to choose this uh, set of points subset of points in P we can assign them randomly for example in this case we choose some random points in the red curve or the red scan and then we find the closest point in Q in the blue scan and then we match here in here in this case we can see that when we are choosing these points uh, randomly it is possible that they lie absolutely very close to each other and then we might have a zero error However, a better method is to find such points which have different normals and this method is called normal space sampling. What do we mean by uh, points having normals? Usually points cannot have normals. So what do we mean by that? Um, okay, so normals when we compute for the points, we mean that we, for every point we consider some neighborhood of points like a k nearest neighbor and we construct if uh, or fit a plane in this neighborhood of points and since you have a plane you can find uh, simple equations 
the normal to that plane and that normal is considered the normal for the given point so if we use that method for every point in one curve when we are choosing uh, we should choose such points which have different normal values so what this will happen uh, what uh, does this accomplish when you choose points which have different normals it means that you are choosing distinctive points which have different curvatures on the surface of the objects and therefore the chances of them having more uh, distinctive properties is higher okay so what is the advantage of uh, normal sampling versus random sampling uh, on the right hand side you can see uh, normal sampling where we chose points which have different normal values uh, and you can see that both these curve, curve um, scans they match quite, quite well and they are smoothly merged or aligned whereas on the left hand side we can see that if you do random sampling it is possible that um, the matches are not correct or they are matched with incorrect points yeah okay so in practice uh, data sets ha are given by discrete points, uh, a 3D point cloud, as I was uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, how to find corresponding points? So we saw how to do, how to do that using closest point approach in, in an iterative fashion. And if we find these uh, points along the along the curves, they they are perfectly aligned, right? However, the error is not equal to zero. And why is that? So. Uh, when you find this, uh, uh, this differences between these two points, there is uh, this this mesh, um, this shows that the error is not equal to zero. Uh, and so the solution is that instead of choosing these random points or choosing this way the closest point, we choose um, closest point on the tangent plane of the closest point. Okay. So what does this mean? Let's assume that uh, our curve here is the red curve, which is merged over or um, aligned over the blue curve, right? So we choose some random points in normal spaced points on the red curve, and then we find uh, tangents to those points. Now tangents can be found because we know the normal uh, of each point, and then it's easier to find tangent because they are perpendicular to one another. So all those points chosen on the red curve uh, we draw the tangents across them so they are all tangent planes now we find the points which are closest to these tangent planes in point or in the in the curve q here in this case is uh, the blue curve so these tangent planes are on the points lying on the red plane we find the closest point on the blue curve which will be these points and when you choose this and then you iterate over this the advantage of using these point planes over point point uh, correspondences is this that here you can see that uh, when you when we are using point plane correspondences the iterative algorithm is able to converge faster and much uh, much earlier than um, than the red plane than the red curve okay another issue is that the scanner data that we have the 3d point cloud that we generate we cannot assume that it is perfect it always has noise it has a scatter noise it can be uh, anything that is uh, uh, not visible and in order to avoid this um, noise we um, we need to take some steps how so we remember you remember that we need to minimize this squared error here however if there are outliers or noise that will contribute um, huge amounts to this error calculation for example like this if you find this closest matching point for these outliers the errors error computation is quite huge for these points so the one one of the ways to get rid of them is to just prune these outliers we keep only 50 nearest closest correspondences but then we are really severely uh, restricting our algorithm iterative algorithm However, this is a very simplistic approach. Uh, another method is that we weigh the correspondences. So all those good correspondences, the ones which are close, which have similar normals and curvatures, they get larger weights. Whereas the ones which are quite far, like this point, which is an outlier, it gets a lower weight. Another problem in practice is that scans 
overlap only partially and this only happens uh, this happens because we don't have multiple scans uh, from the same point of view or from the same camera angle we have different camera angles so in order to find correspondences we need to match or overlap these points uh, such that uh, it has a meaningful correspo uh, correspondences here in this case we see that uh, these are two completely two different curvatures and if these points uh, and if these curvatures are nearby and if we use our iterative point algorithm what it will do is try to match these points along the blue curve in this ma manner and it will try to move uh, the red curve on the left hand side however uh, this is obviously not an improvement this is worse than the previous um, than this uh, matching so there are problems or uh, practical problems that we can face while doing this 3d matching okay just to wrap uh, up the icp algorithm uh, what we do is we select some points in our source data set we find the closest points in target data set on the target on the tangent plane we weigh all those correspondences reject the misleading point pairs basically the outliers or uh, de-weight them or give them very less weight um, for example points on the shape boundary or the outliers we give them less weight we compute r and t for the remaining correspondences using the Prokhor stress method and we then transform the source data set such that it will get nearer or closer to the target data set and then we find the error metric and if the error metric has improved and if we have uh, converged using some predefined criteria then we are uh, done with our alignment otherwise we repeat this whole process another time these are some references that you can use for uh, reading about icp algorithms and that's it for uh, um, for this part of the video for this part of the lecture next uh, part will show we will talk about how we can convert the fine aligned um, uh, point cloud uh, into nice looking surfaces and that will be the end of our uh, computer vision lecture series for summer semester 2020 uh, in the end i would like to say some things and uh, maybe i will uh, create another video for that uh, for the sake of keeping uh, coherency in our lectures uh yeah and that's it so uh, take care until next time bye